Mr. Chairman, may I have your permission to display some slides on the LED screen later in my speech, please? Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Several members have asked about the government's efforts to help our companies and people adopt the new technologies and internationalize. Let me first address Ms. Shara Chan's questions on the recommendation by the CFE to continue building a globally competitive manufacturing sector. Manufacturing continues to remain a key pillar of our economy. The sector currently accounts for around 20% of our GDP and 14% of total employment. MTI supports the CFE's recommendation to maintain manufacturing share of GDP at around 20% in the medium term. As highlighted by Mr. Charles Chong, Manufacturing creates good job opportunities for our people, contributes to productivity growth, and generates positive spillovers to the rest of the economy. Based on MTI estimates, a one billion Singapore dollar increase in manufacturing value added through final demand would generate about 330 million Singapore dollars of value added and 2,500 jobs for the rest of the economy, including business services and the wholesale trade. Having a manufacturing base also helps us to capture opportunities and generate innovation which would otherwise take place overseas. Our push into advanced manufacturing will help strengthen the competitiveness and relevance of our manufacturing sector. One key difference between advanced and traditional manufacturing is the digitalization and automation of manufacturing operations and workflow processes, from receiving an order all the way down to the production in the factory floor. Advanced manufacturing will enable companies, both large and small, to raise their productivity as well as develop adjacent products, services, and business models. In turn, this will strengthen Singapore's leadership in key industrial clusters such as aerospace and semiconductors. As Ms. Shara Chan observed, global leading manufacturers have been investing in the development and commercialization of new manufacturing technologies. Ms. Shara Chan may be happy to note that many of these players re continue to remain keen to work with our public sector research institutes. For example, aerospace heavyweights like Airbus and Honeywell have leveraged ASTAR's aerospace program to better understand and minimize causes of defects in aerospace components through additive manufacturing. Under the Advanced Manufacturing and Engineering Research Innovation and Enterprise 2020 strategy, we will leverage partnerships with leading manufacturers to co-develop and deploy advanced manufacturing technologies. The goal is to enhance the competitiveness of our manufacturing sector and to position our enterprises as solution providers of advanced manufacturing technologies. To this end, I'm pleased to announce that ASTAR will establish two model factories to allow companies, particularly our SMEs, to firstly experience the technologies firsthand in the learning environment without affecting their existing business operations, and secondly, to collaborate with stakeholders to test bid and jointly develop innovative solutions for their processes. The model factories will be hosted at the Singapore Institute for Manufacturing Technology, or SIMTEC, as well as the Advanced Remanufacturing and Technology Centre, or the ARTC. We aim to have them operational by the fourth quarter of this year. Each model factory is designed to support the different technological needs of our SMEs. A key feature of the model factory at Simtech is a live pilot scale production line that allows companies to gain hands-on experience of advanced manufacturing technologies prior to full adoption. Simtech has also developed a suite of digital manufacturing solutions called the Manufacturing Control Tower Platform, or the MCT, which allows companies to have greater visibility and smarter management of their manufacturing operations through a central control platform that is easily accessible by a simple mobile app. The second model factory at the ARTC will allow companies to test bait the integration of smart, digital, and advanced technologies with their existing manufacturing processes for better productivity and resource utilization. Now, even as ASTAR is setting up these model factories I spoke about, one of our local enterprises has already started piloting Simtex MCT platform. Precision engineering company, CKE Manufacturing, is making use of the MCT to monitor the performance of five of its shop floor machines in real time. Using a mobile app, CKE's staff are able to track the performance of the machines without, the, have, without having to physically inspect them. The pilot has enabled CKE to improve its manpower deployment by about 50% and optimize the utilization of its machines 
So CKE is now looking at connecting all its machines to this M MCT platform. Now, the technology changes that we're witnessing are global in nature and not just unique to the manufacturing sector. As Dr. Tan Wu Ming noted, the biologics landscape is changing too. The biosimilar space is nascent and the regulatory environment is still evolving internationally. What we do know is that innovative drugs such as biosimilars both require a strong regulatory environment, clinical development and manufacturing know-how to deliver safe and high-quality products to patients. We will continue to build core capabilities in research and development and the advanced manufacturing of biologics in order to position Singapore well to capture investments arising from biologics, which includes biosimilars, regardless of the eventual market structure in this category of drugs. We are confident that Singapore is well placed to harness these disruptions and turn them into opportunities for our companies and our people. Mr. Liang Eng Hua and Mr. Charles Chong asked about the government's efforts to build up our startup landscape. Startups play an important role in our economy because they are nimble, they churn over ideas quickly, and are more willing to take risks. Over the past decade, there have been considerable efforts by various stakeholders to develop a thriving startup scene in Singapore. These include nurturing an entrepreneurial culture, providing funding support, and catering for the necessary infrastructure. As a result, we have seen a sizable increase both in the number and the quality of our startups. First, the number. The total number of startups in Singapore has more than doubled from 22,000 in 2003 to 48,000 in 2015. In terms of quality, our startups have also improved with significant increases in the number and aggregate valuations of startup exits. In 2015, there were 220 venture capital deals completed worth more than US $1 billion combined. This is compared to 26 deals worth US $80 million just five years ago. Notable successes include live customer support chat solution provider Zopim and online marketplace Lazada, which were acquired for about US $30 million in 2014 and US $1 billion in 2016 respectively. Our efforts have catalyzed a robust startup ecosystem here, but we can do more and we should. I co-led a startup deep dive as part of the CFE discussions last year. We studied how to give our startup scene an additional push so we can take off in a much larger way. We will therefore strengthen our startup support in three key areas, namely branding, funding, and talent attraction. Let me first talk about branding. A coherent brand identity for Singapore startup that resonates among Singaporeans and the rest of the world is important given the fierce global competition for entrepreneurial talent and funding today. As a first step, therefore, we will establish a new umbrella branding known as Startup SG to unify our startup support schemes. Some of the schemes under the Startup SG umbrella branding will include Startup SG Founder to support first-time entrepreneurs, Startup SG Tech to support the development of deep tech innovations, Startup SG Equity to incentivize equity co-investment for startups, Startup SG Accelerator to support incubators and accelerators which offer programs for startups, and Startup SG Talent to support talent development for startups. With the unified branding, it will be easier for budding entrepreneurs to identify the relevant schemes for their unique situation and their needs. Over time, we will work with other stakeholders to further strengthen the Startup SG brand. To further support our startups, we will also enhance two key enablers. First, funding, and secondly, talent. Let me address the first enabler. Equity financing is important to enable our startups to grow and to scale. However, not all startups have the same funding needs or gestation periods. For instance, compared to Infocom technology or ICT startups that develop online applications or web portals, startups that develop non-ICT or deep technologies typically require higher capital outlay and a much longer gestation period to succeed due to the prototyping process and product trials that they need to undergo. Therefore, as part of the Startup SG Equity Scheme, we will enhance the government's co-investment support for promising startups in deep tech areas such as in medical technology, clean technology and advanced manufacturing to catalyze private sector investment for this group. 
we will enhance the government's support in two ways. Firstly, we will double the investment cap for the government's co-investment portion for deep tech startups from $2 million to $4 million. This enhancement allows the government to tier our funding support for ICT and deep tech startups according to their differing needs. Secondly, we will increase the proportion of the government's co-investment funding support for supported investments from 50% to 70%. Now, the second enabler is talent. As Mr. Charles Chong noted, we need a strong talent pool comprising capable entrepreneurs who can contribute to our local startup scene. Given Singapore's small size, we need to remain open to promising global talent. The rising global protectionist sentiments that emerged in 2016 present us with the opportunity to position Singapore as an attractive startup location for global talent. Foreign entrepreneurs have the capacity to add to the vibrancy of our startup scene. They complement our local startups through the cross-fertilization of ideas, catalyze new partnerships, and create good jobs for our people. As at 2015, foreign startups employed more than 19,000 workers in total. In 2003, we introduced a work pass scheme known as EntrePass for foreign entrepreneurs keen to start a business in Singapore. We will further enhance this scheme to create a more conducive environment for promising global talent keen to establish innovative businesses here. Under the enhancements, the existing entry and renewal criteria will be revised. Let me outline the three key changes. Firstly, we will remove the requirement for applicants to have a paid-up capital of at least 50000 in their startups to welcome global entrepreneurs with good ideas to come in at a much earlier stage and grow their businesses from Singapore. Secondly, we will broaden the evaluation criteria for global startup founders with an established track record to explore the startup scene here. And finally, we will extend the validity of each entrepreneur from the current one year to two years after the first renewal at year two. In other words, if the foreign entrepreneur can demonstrate progress at the end of the first year, the entrepreneurs will be extended for another year. Thereafter, subsequent entrepreneurs renewals will be valid for two years. Now, this enhancement will better position us to engage and attract a larger talent pool at a global setting at an earlier stage who can contribute to the vibrancy of our local startup scene. The enhancements are especially timely given the increasing international interest in Singapore as a global startup destination. In the same spirit of remaining open, we want to encourage our local startups to also adopt a global mindset and tap on our exist and existing extensive bilateral networks as launching pads for their overseas ventures. The Global Innovation Alliance, mentioned by Ministers for Trade and Industry, Lim Hung Kiang and S. Yuswaran, seeks to enable this exchange of innovative ideas between our local companies and their foreign counterparts. In fact, our local partners are already actively facilitating such collaborations. In the US, NUS Enterprise, Singtel Innovate and SG Innovate jointly set up Block 71 at San Francisco as a launchpad for Singaporean tech startups. Last year, the Action Community for Entrepreneurship, or ACE, a private-led initiative aimed at fostering entrepreneurship, also partnered US-based Singaporean networks to establish the ACE Silicon Valley chapter. Both of these serve as platforms for our companies to gain access to US markets by tapping the experience and networks of US-based Singaporeans and their US counterparts. The GIA will write on existing initiatives such as these to enable our companies to strengthen inroads, build partnerships in foreign markets, and prepare our companies to internationalize. Sir, may I now speak in Mandarin, please? Chai Chi Sen Sen Sen, Tana Lachmi Nishi, Sun Xie Ling Nishi, He Chen Hui Ling Nishi, Do Xiang Zhi Dao, Zheng Fu, Ru He Zhi Chi Ben Di Chi Ye, Tuo Zhan Hai Wai Ye Wu. Tabia Shi Xie Zhu Ben Di Gong Si, Jing Jun Gao Su, Zheng Zhang de Xing Xing Shi Chang. Zheng Ru Lin Xing Xiang Bu Zhang Zhi Qian Su Chang Tiao, Wu Lun Shi Da Gong Si, Huo Xiao Gong Si, Guo Ji Hua Shi Ben Di Chi Ye, Zhuang Da He Zhuang Xing de Zhu Yao Dong Li. 企业要扩大规模、成功转型，就得借助新加坡品牌的强大优势，充分把握海外市场的强劲增长机会。新加坡国际企业发展局（简称企发局）有多项协助计划，支持本地公司国际化，其中包括市场进入协助计划，协助企业跨出进军海外市场的第一步，国际企业合作计划。则是为已经在海外落户的企业给予更有针对性的支持。去年
，启发局共协助并处理超过三万七千个企业个案，其中大约八成是中小企业个案。启发局也在同一年内协助企业在海外推动超过四百五十个项目。超越了二零幺五年的大约四百二十个项目。值得一提的是，这些项目当中，大部分是倾向于帮助企业了解海外市场需求，在新市场或新行业建立业绩，打响名声，借助数码平台和管道争取全球客户，扩大客源，并且通过引进技术、科技和开发人力资资源，壮大企业的实力。这种种的努力。为的是加强新加坡企业在海外的声誉和声望，让这些公司更具优势去掌握未来的商机。正如陈慧玲女士所指出，城市化发展和消费能力的提高，带动了新兴经济体的增长，也因此展现不容忽视的庞大商机。贸工部对本地企业的扶助，也会以新兴市场为重点目标。启发局通过全球三十七家海外中心，为本地企业提供高度针对性的在地支持，而这些海外中心大多设立在东南亚、中国、印度等新兴市场。正如易华人部长所提到的，我们将在一个统一的新加坡中心的旗帜以下，强化各海外中心作业的联系与协调。贸工部也将继续深化在在地市场的运作。和扩大联联络网联联络网络，帮助新加坡企业寻找和把握商机。此外，我们也在海外市场启动了好几个政府间的合作项目，为本地公司在地与在地伙伴牵线和寻找合作的契机。中心重庆战略性互联互通示范项目是其中一个例子。这个示范项目为新加坡企业进军中国西部。这个大家较为陌生的市场开了路，其中一家在中兴重庆战略性互联互通合作示范性项目框架下成功与重庆伙伴敲定合作方案的是新加坡樟宜机场管理投资有限公司，简称长宜 Airports International 或 CAI。他们刚在今年一月份与重庆机场集团达成协议，成立商业合资公司。共同管理重庆江北国际机场的非航空业务。新加坡政府也在中兴重庆战略性互联互通示范项目的框架下，与中国相关各方合作，共同开发南向通道。这南向通道一旦落实，将以广西为中国贯通亚细安的重要门户，缩短两地之间的货运时间。从而进一步深化中国西部与东南亚的有机衔接、互联互通。乘着中国西部大开发的战略势头，新中两国政府间的合作将为新加坡企业带来更多的新商机。有两家公司就看准了广西的广西的这股发展势头，乘势而上。他们是 p s a 国际港务集团和新加坡太平宠物公司。这两家公司目前与广西北部湾国际海港啊海港务港务集团合作，共同管理青州港的设施。青州港是国际航线和船只由中国西南海岸进入中国的重要港口。我在去年九月率领了一支代表团到南宁出席每年一度的中国东盟博览会。这个高层平台。意在推动亚细安与中国之间的经贸合作。我很高兴见到我们新加坡的中小企业通过中国东盟博览会寻获进入中国市场的商机。让我在这里举一个例子：本地一家专门售卖迷你杯子蛋糕 （mini cupcakes） 的新加坡企业叫甜甜屋，两年前在中国东盟博览会的新加坡国家国家馆展呃参展，很多中国企业与民众对他们的产品反应非常的热烈。不久之后，甜甜屋便决定开拓南宁市场，创立创建迷你杯子蛋糕的这个连锁店。如今，甜甜屋在南宁一共有三家分店，所有分店的蛋糕全由一个中央厨房负责烘焙供应。据我了解，甜甜屋烘焙的迷你杯子蛋糕特别受小朋友的欢迎
，而他们的父母亲呢，也因为甜甜屋是新加坡的品牌，所以对迷你杯子蛋糕的品质和安全感到放心。如今，甜甜屋正在扩展、扩大他们的产品和服务范围。他们不久前开始推出了杯子蛋糕亲子烘焙班。上面所提到的例子，再一次显示了。世界各地高速增长的新兴地区，充满无限的商机，机会处处，就等着各个领域的本地企业去发掘、去开拓。我鼓励本地企业充分利用政府提供的全方位资源，勇敢跨出我们的国门，抓紧新契机，共同创造新经济时代的繁荣发展。Let me now address. Uh, Mr. Lim Biao Chuan's question, which he submitted earlier to MTI, on how we can better protect our consumers. I wish to assure Mr. Lim that we take a serious view of errant retailers who engage in unfair trading practices and will not hesitate to take firm actions against them. We amended the CPFTA, or the Consumer Protection Fair Trading Act, in 2016 to empower spring investigative and enforcement powers to take injunction actions against errant businesses. Cases that involve criminal activity will be handled by the police. Members may recall the recent case of parallel car importer Vox Auto. One of its employees was charged with criminal conspiracy to cheat its customers and sentenced to 10 years in jail. Let me emphasize that company directors will knowingly take monies from prepayment deposits for their own personal purposes may be separately prosecuted under the Companies Act and the Penal Code as well. Sir, let me conclude. As I have elaborated in my speech, there are plenty of opportunities for our companies and people, be they manufacturing firms looking to adopt technologies, SMEs keen on expanding overseas, or aspiring entrepreneurs. Through our various initiatives and programs, the government will support our companies and people to seize these opportunities. Thank you, sir.